Today we're going to be having a look at the Kripkins, a case of Kripkins vinyl figures. Kripkins do exist, as indicated by the packaging. This comes was from the folks over at Cryptozoic. You can find these now at local comic book stores. And yes, in fact, we are going to be having a look at Series 1 and an entire case. I love the look of this case. It has a certain uh, kind of crate look to it, where you have the faux wood and some of the offerings here of the Kripkins. It's recommended for ages 14 and up and from Cryptozoic Entertainment. It's interesting that the uh, set consists of 13, collect all 13, but if you do your math, there's six on the top, six on the bottom, and unless there's one hidden somewhere, no, no, I don't see another one, uh, you may not get all 13 in a case. So F, Y, I, you may wanna be picking up more of these. And I gotta admit, they look pretty cool and uh, A plus points given for packaging. Speaking of individual packaging, here is what the boxes look like. Here are, at the very least, 12, well, that's 10, plus another three down below. These, uh, these two don't have question marks. This must be lucky 13 down below. I gotta admit, they look really cool though. One looks like a buzzard, one looks like an alien, one looks almost like the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, perhaps a Yeti. They're kind of looks like they're inspired by other real, you know, urban legend monsters, right down to the Cthulhu. That may very well be Bigfoot. Very anxious, though, to get these opened up. And yes, they have put some breathing holes, not there, but on either side. So it will prevent the Kripkins from eh, eh, suffocating. You should never joke around about suffocation, but luckily Cryptozoic has thought that out. I'm going to go ahead and use Hank here. Gonna cut open the first box inside each one of them. Oh, they come in two, two different contents. I'm assuming this be the Krypton on its own. And then this is probably a file card. Very gingerly, very gingerly, we're gonna go ahead and cut the packaging open, which will tell us right away, I'm assuming this would be accurate to the one that we're getting inside. We're getting Nessie. It does have a brief read up, which I probably will not read every single one of them because you have places you need to go you have people you need to see but I'll just show that up to the screen here you wanted to pause it and have a look at that and there's Nessie so let's go ahead and cut the bag let's grab the first one it is in fact Nessie I just quickly did this to see if there's any articulation I don't believe so it looks like it is completely staction. In other words, there is no possibility to it. Some fantastic looking paint though. Very well painted. Nice sculpt also as well. The top fins, if you want to call them fins, and the bottom flippers feel like they are slightly softer plastic other than that. The majority of it does feel like it's dense plastic. Open mouth there with the teeth all painted in. A really beautiful uh, selection. Points also could be given for the selection of blues. Well done, guys. Well done. I love that color blue, and the red really accents well against it. really pops. I'm not just saying that as well, because, well, my logo shares similar color palettes. So I'm going to put that right over there. Oh, why not? We'll put the card along with that. Let's grab box number two, which is a little bit harder to kind of get them out here. Go ahead and cut the seal on the front open up. Love this packaging. Yes, I already said that, but I'm just reiterating. I'm just saying it again. I do like the packaging quite a bit. And we'll cut this one open. I guess this sort of gives away the characters. Maybe what we'll do is look, look at the blind bag first, and then we'll look at the card. This is Nightcrawler. You could say he has no body. Literally, no body. No arms. I guess the torso is there. That's the stomach. I thought that was for a mouth for a second. That probably is its stomach. It does look like it would almost glow in the dark. There's the read up on it. And let's go ahead and cut the bag to reveal inside that crawler. 
I would not say it glows in the dark, but definitely gives you a slight indication that it could glow in the dark by the paint that they've applied there. A little bit of a scuff on the back, but I like how it's got almost a slightly glow in the dark sort of color on the front. And then its legs, as well as its back here, has been airbrushed probably with like an additional, even darker glow in the dark green. It really does work well. Again, it has, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, taking a brief moment just to grab myself a beverage. It must have been all that drywall sandwich that I was eating earlier. No, I'm not eating a drywall sandwich. Uh, again, it's got some great looking coloring. No body, no arms, no mouth actually even here as well. Little bit of an indication of a belly button, not really too much though. Love the claws that they've sculpted in. Really fun looking piece. Put that one right over there. Grabbing box number three. Hopefully no interruptions now. I think I was snacking away on some potato chips. There might have been just one rogue chip just hiding out. It was like a ninja. It was just kind of tucked away at the back of the throat there. Wasn't going to make an appearance. It's like, you know what? I'll sneak out later and get him then. But I guess joke's on me. That little crumblet of chip made its appearance once again. This one, uh, again, looks kind of like the Abominable Snow Monster or Yeti. Let's add proof to that by revealing the card. Take the card out. Yes, in fact, it is the Yeti. There's the card. There's the figure. This one's kind of just strolling along. Just strolling along. Maybe he's looking for some potato chips as well. I would imagine whatever potato chips you're going to find out there, Mr. Yeti, are going to be quite frozen. A little yucky, maybe. There's the back of the card, if you want to have a look at that. And here's the Yeti. An otherwise pretty white-looking figure, other than this fantastic-looking airbrushing that they've added of the brown at the bottom. I don't know if the intent of that is to give it the sense that it's dirt, or if that's just the coloring of its fur. As you can see, it only really makes appearances along the bottom area here. His hands stay otherwise pretty clean, and you've got the airbrushing happening there on the arms as well. So it could be fur, it could be dirt, it could be a little bit of country, and a whole lot of rock and roll. Again, nice looking face on it. No posability, but what you're getting trade-off wise is a nice looking sculpted figure. Something you could just put on the shelf and admire. This is box number four. Oh, I probably shouldn't be shaking that too much, especially if there's a critter inside. Especially if it's already a nasty critter, you don't want to be shaking, well, you don't want to be shaking a, a cage anywhere, anyways that an animal is inside. If you own a pet, I'd like to hope that you're not keeping a pet in a cage anyways, but that's, that's my own, that's something on the side that we can talk about later. Look at the coloring on this one. Would you say it's a buzzard? I guess maybe that would be a safe assumption. Kind, actually, you know what? No, maybe it's closer to being like, I don't really know. It kind of looks like Toucan Sam, but then the wings look almost like a Pteranodon. It probably says, warning, you know, harboring travelers on the way up to the castle, the dark castle up in the sky. Boy, you paint such a wondrous story. Thank you. Thank you. It's That's all in my head. Maybe again, the card will give us some indication as to what's going on, what the name of this character is. So let's go ahead and do that now. It is Thunderbird. No, no, not that Thunderbird. Although this Thunderbird is go, it's off to do something. It looks like it lives in like a Nevada wasteland, which would probably explain the nature of why it looks the way that it does. Again, you've got some nice grays, some nice darker grays on the in interior areas of the wings. Bloodshot red eyes. Nice additional red makes its way into its beak. This is really nice. I like this, this right here, the transitioning of the red to the orange. Again, nothing is movable on. The wings are slightly on a softer variety. Put that right over there. And grab the next box. Try not to knock all these little critters over in the process of that. 
Oops, I just dropped the card. Hold on one second. And the floor claims yet another victim. I guess it's not really a victim because I've retrieved it. Okay, let's go back to unbagging these. I was about to reveal the card, but then I knew, well, no, we don't want to do that just yet. Get a gander at this one. It looks like it's a cross between a bird and a rabbit. I say rabbit by the nature of these, what appear to be ears sticking up from the top there, but they are all feathered. Feathered wings as well. I don't know what you would call that. I guess Cryptozoic would know what to call it, because I'll just check the card, see what they've called it according to the card. According to the card, it is the Twilight Mothman. Richard Gere, nowhere to be found. It's a good movie, Mothman Prophecies. But this is the Twilight Mothman. I'm a little more curious about this one. The name Twilight Mothman, full-grown height, weight, unknown, but past accounts suggest between 4 feet and 12 feet tall. That's a considerable jump of height. Description, he may have or he may have a strange love for barns and abandoned buildings, especially right before it gets dark, but there's nothing scary about this lovable monster. Uh, he's ready to fly out of, of legend and right into your heart. Oh, see, I'm glad I read that. I didn't read that. How I would have missed out on that. Diet is carnivore. Habitat and range, New England. There's the card again right there. There's the Twilight Mothman. That one right over there. At the very end of all this, waving over here violently, I'm going to pick out my top three favorite. You know how I usually do that with uncasings of cool collectibles, just like these ones right here. We'll do a top three. In the meantime, I hope you're readying that noodle up there. So I, wanna, I want you guys to tell me what you think are your top three favorites from this case. Ooh, the next one looks like it could be a wolfman. Also looks like it could be a pine cone. No, in fact, you're wrong on both accounts, says the person that posed the question. This is, I'm guessing, Bigfoot. Or Sasquatch, another way you can call him. You could also call him Harry, if you are of the Henderson class, the Henderson family. Also a good movie. This is Bigfoot. Bigfoot, what looks to be, is munching on berries or flowers. I would not probably question the idea of, you know, those could be poisonous. He lives out there. He knows. He knows that stuff. He'd say, listen, let's sit down for a second. Let Bigfoot school you on berries and what you can't and what you cannot, what you can and cannot eat. Kind of like the Yeti, which I guess, actually, if you look at it, they are copies to one another. Again, just for a slight variation on paint. The very bright nature of the Yeti is contrasted rather nicely with the more muddied nature of the Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Now this one again, not quite certain whether that is dirt or just simply its fur. The Bigfoot otherwise is uh, pretty much well-rounded, got the same sort of color scheme all around its body. It's got a little few notations here of like a darker color sort of just peeking out on the tips of the fur. A little bit of that also happening around the cuff or area right by the feet and the hands. And yes, his feet, woo! They're not smelly, but they are they are considerably big and dirty. So you may want, want to wash those. Just saying. Berry eating is fine and good and all, but you may want to consider personal hygiene as well, just F FYI. Let's grab the next box. And yes, Jacob, if you are wondering, you should be able to find these at your local comic book store. If you don't happen to see them there, you could also ask the person right there. They'd be more than happy. I'm sure they're not going to turn away customers in business. They'd be more than happy to likely order these in for you if you probably want to get yourself a case. Uh, so far, by the way, and I didn't really want to say it because, you know, I didn't want to jinx anything, but so far, we haven't gotten any doubles. I really like this one. It kind of looks like it's a devil. It kind of looks like Stitch. 
Is it Stitch? From that Disney movie? Although, of course, much darker, more of a brown color. Kind of looks like a Tasmanian devil. You got these little, little tiny, look how small they are. I don't want to draw much attention to this. I don't want to make him feel conscious, self-conscious about it, but look at the size of those little wings. And he's got hooved feet. This guy is adorable. I would love this guy as a pet. I would call him Gary. Let's see exactly what he is by again referencing to the 411 information that's on this card, including its name. Having a look at the card, it is the Jersey Devil. I was close. I said Tasmanian Devil, but it's the Jersey Devil. Some little information on the back. You know what? I did, to be fair, have such a good time reading the last one. I'm going to read this one too. The name is the Jersey Devil. Full grown height and weight is unknown, but local legend describes it as about six feet tall. Description, don't let the horns in the name fool you. He can he can be a bit rascally and may unintentionally cause mass hysteria at times. I too have also had the same description about me as well. Uh, but this fanged fellow is just looking for a buddy to have some fun with. Well, ring-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, I hope my phone goes in the next little while. I would hang out with you, Jersey Devil. The diet is carnivore and prefers livestock, especially chickens. Habitat and range, pine barrens of southern New Jersey. Henceforth, the Jersey Devil. 411, by the way. That's information, in case you were wondering. I probably will have him up the top three. Grabbing the next box. Getting this opened up. Revealing it to you, my lovable and friendly viewers. The next one is... It looks like a variation to the Twilight Mothman. Just a slight darker, well, considerably darker contrast. Very stark contrast of the light and the dark. All the aspects on this one, which are pr primarily white, or I guess you could say slightly off-white, are now in a very dark, dark black, which those very red eyes, which showed very well on the white, just pierce through the nature of the black, the otherwise black backdrop here. Uh, actually, it's not exactly a 100% carbon copy. You can see that the wings are drastically different from one another. Although the face, the feet, and I'm guessing, yes, I would be perhaps correct, the wings are identical to one another. So there are variations. There's a slight variation to the head sculpt. Primarily these. And what is this, you may ask? Well, let's go ahead. Let's find out. Let's open this up. And there we go. This is the Mothman. Not just the Twilight Mothman, but this is the Mothman. There's the two cards side by side. So reading on the back to see if they are they are different. Well, the Mothman, unknown, but folklore suggests a wingspan of 10 feet. Descriptions, you'll think that those legends about him terrifying a small town are just ridiculous after you meet this sweet fellow. See, again! Never judge a book by its cover. Um, after you meet this sweet fellow, still you should probably warn your neighbors about this red, about your red-eyed, high-flying little friend before nefarious rumors about him begin again. Died as carnivore, habitat and range, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And there's this card there. We now have four boxes left to go. Let's go ahead and grab the knife once again. Cut the seal. A very small seal, nothing really to worry too much about. Get this open now. Yes, as you probably could guess it, I've got a bit of a mess happening over here. Don't worry, I'll clean that up afterwards. And the next one is green. Could this be? Could this be? Could this be the Cthulhu? The infamous Cthulhu, here in plastic form. Cthulhu is sort of part bat, part lizard, part octopus. Rather interesting chap. You get this guy alone at a party, he'll spin yarns, it will just knock your socks off, if you are wearing socks. I would hope also as well, if you're going to a party, 
I don't dig people that don't wear socks at parties. I don't dig people that don't wear socks when they come over to people's houses. That's just an assumption that you're awfully comfortable. I don't think you should ever be that comfortable unless you know your friends. If you're just coming over to a stranger's house, at the very least, put some socks on your feet. The Cthulhu, there he is, in card form. There he is, in plastic form, or vinyl. Very beautifully painted piece. Again, some nice transitioning color from the green from its head all the way down to the yellow of his of his little tentacles, which almost actually look like little tiny small baby hands. Little tiny hands of a small infant. Of course, very tiny wings as well. Let's flip this around and have a look here. I really should have started reading all of these. The name is Cthulhu, and there's the phonetic spelling. Ka Fu Lu. Full grown, height, weight, unknown, but there are legends about his impossibly enormous size. Description This fellow has been on long cosmic trip to get to know you. Of course, being a pint sized version of a mythological creature hell bent on destruction, he may be a bit of a handful, but all he needs is a bit of love. Which may also describe me. Diet, it's an omnivore and will eat pretty much anything and everything. Kind of like a goat, which I don't think. I dispute that. I dispute the notion that I've been raised, I think, to believe a lie that a goat will eat anything. When I was younger, they would say goats will literally eat anything. They'll eat gloves. They'll eat tin cans. I don't believe it. Habitat and range is under the Pacific Ocean which would be perfect if they ever did another Pacific Rim movie. Didn't really like the sequel, but another Pacific Rim where they had a Cthulhu in it would knock my socks off. Yes, I am wearing socks. Go ahead and cut the... This is now the third last box. Get that all opened up. Of course, can't forget the card. Get the baggie opened up. And actually, we've got ourselves our first double. I'm thinking, I'm looking. Okay, yeah. Little tiny baby hands. <laughs> Little tiny baby hands. Paint looks the same. The spots on the top, wings on the back. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm willing to admit and state for the record, I believe these are identical to one another. With the proof being in the pudding, don't know what that really necessarily means. Let's get the card out of its baggie. Yeah. There we go. And it is also, in fact, the same card, leading me to believe it is a duplicate. And not too bad when you consider that's the first duplicate of the entire case that we've had a look at. It also does tell me, though, that there's a chance that there are doubles in this case. The cardboard here is now falling apart. Let's just tip that back. There we go. Opening in the next box. I might have also cut this inadvertently upside down or on the underside and cut the bag. And we have ourselves a new one. I guess his head is just naturally posed this way, looking over here. Hey, fella. Hey, fella. Over here. Hi. Hi. How are you? Reviewer. Nice to meet you. You are, and you are, I'm guessing a dragon. It looks like a dragon. It's spiky like a dragon. It's got some nice coloring too, much darker as well than the just looked at Cthulhu, which the Cthulhu is a little bit bigger than, and I'm sorry, you are, sir? You are? Well, let's have a look. Let's find out who this critter is that's now dwelling in this inhabitant, this habitant, this <laughs> habitat. There we go, let's just move that over. This is a chupacabra which I've heard of before. I didn't realize they look like this. Habitat. Flip it around. Let's have a look here. The Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Full size, height, and weight is unknown, but past sightings suggest the size of a small bear. Description, he may be fiercely green and have spikes running along his head and back, but he just wants to be your friend. Don't believe those rumors about him drinking the blood of livestock also had those rumors about me. Uh, but keep him away from farms and goats, especially goats just in case. Isn't that funny? We were just talking about goats. 
Its diet is its carnivore and it prefers, prefers goats, deer, rabbits, etc. Habitat and range is North, Central, and South America and the Caribbean. So that really inhabits a lot of the North and South area, North and South America there. Other than up at the top here, which I would be like, I would be like right there. So I'm really in Chupacabra territory. I just better watch myself before I wreck myself. I know I should be checking myself, but also really liking the look of that one. All right, so everybody, come hither. Come on, come on, come here. You, yes, over here. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, right now. This is the last bag right here. Let's figure out what the last bag is gonna be by getting the knife, getting it cut open, revealing the double, double, but still, it's of the chuka, chupacabra. Love this one though, I really do. Again, I wish I wish they had a little bit of head posability, but still I really quite like these. Of my top three favorites, I would say, hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm gonna go with the Thunderbird a go. Ah! I would do that one as number three, my third favorite, or the bronze. My second favorite, and I'm still holding it in hand, is the Chupacabra. I would say is that my, my second favorite. And my first favorite, to probably to no surprise, is the Jersey Devil. I just love the look of this guy. He is also considerably taller if you put him next to the other two. He is quite a bit taller than the other two. So that's, that is my number one. That is my Riker of the Star Trek universe, even though we weren't looking at the Star Trek universe. What we were looking at though, how's this for a segue? We were looking at the new Cryptozoic Entertainment, Cryptins, Cryptkins, Cryptkins, they do exist. This is series one, collect all thir uh, 13. And I think we ultimately collected one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten out of 13. And I'm just looking on the back here. So I guess there would have been a variation uh, to the Thunderbird, and it looks like there would also be a variation to the Nessie. And also the question mark one, which I guess would be lucky number 13, would be a variation if I'm looking at the, the shape. Yeah, that shape looks very familiar. It looks like the Cthulhu. So I'm thinking that that would be the 13th. Again, if you're interested in picking these up for yourself, you can find them at your local comic book stores. If you want to find out some more cool collectibles from Cryptozoic, I'll put the information down below to their website and social media where you can follow them. Today, once again, we're having a look at the Cryptozoic Entertainment Cryptkins Series 1 Vinyl Figures. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. There's the box again. If you also wanted to check out some other Cryptozoic pieces that this chap, this fellow right here behind the camera has also had a look at, there is a Cryptozoic Entertainment playlist on this channel. More videos will be coming your way, guys, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.